Hello, thank you for listening. This is the near-death experience of John, and this experience occurred on November the 13th, 1994. Open quote. I was on board a large catamaran in Key West Harbor watching a motorboat race on the morning of Friday, November 13th, 1994. Conditions were gusty. I was standing at the stern of the boat, looking toward the rear. The mainsail jibbed suddenly, which means that it came around to the other side of the boat with incredible speed and force by a change in wind direction, and the end of it caught me on the side of the head and knocked me off my feet and down a hatchway head first. Fortunately, someone on board had a cell phone and called the Coast Guard who were nearby because of the race. The Coast Guard came and took me ashore to the hospital. I can remember parts of this. They checked me out in the emergency room and gave me a CAT scan, which showed multiple skull fractor fractures and that my sinuses were filled with blood. Then the emergency room staff hooked me up to an EKG machine in a side room. Outside, there was a sudden noise of helicopters and pandemonium in the emergency room. Following my accident, a motorboat in the race tipped over and the driver and throttle man were trapped underneath for 15 minutes. They were brought in by helicopters. While they were trying to save these men, one of whom died, they left me alone in the side room. The next thing I remember is being outside of my body and being able to fly around the room. I remember being delighted at being able to propel myself around. I went up to the ceiling and looked at the light fixtures close up, noting the detail of them and how they were made. Then I looked down and saw my body still lying there, and there was a man that looked a little like a doctor leaning over it. I flew down for a closer look. He was dressed in what at first seemed a lot like a hospital robe. It was yellow, almost like it had gold in it. He wore a pillbox-type hat, which looked a little like the kind of cap a doctor wears in surgery, except this was more like a hat, and it, was, and it had writing on it, an alphabet I did not recognize. However, it might have been Hebrew or something related to it. He held objects that looked similar to crochet hooks, they were gold or bronze in color, and he was using them to do something to the side of my head where I had been hit. Then he said something to me like, Well, you won't get too many chances to recover from something like this again. You must be more careful in the future, or you won't be able to do what you have to do, and that won't be good. It was as if he didn't say it in so many words, but I understood it as complete sentences. Then he said, Now stop fooling around by flying around and get back into your body and ask someone for water and a blanket. I did just what he said, and in an instant he disappeared, and I could feel myself zipping back into my body. Soon a nurse walked by, and I asked her for water and a blanket. She brought me the blanket, which felt really good, and she let me wet my mouth with a little water. Then I went to sleep. Later, they took me upstairs. Because of the confusion, I spent about nine hours in the emergency room. End quote. What a great story. Had little crochet hooks. Doing something to the side of my head where I had been hit. <laughs> And well, you won't get too many chances to recover from something like this, you must be more careful in the future or you won't be able to do what you have to do and that won't be good. There are some questions. Let me see. Did you feel separated from your body? Answer, yes. I felt that I was conscious apart from the sleeping and unconscious body on the stretcher below me. I could move about by will as if I were flying. I really enjoyed being able to do it, like a little kid thrilled with a new toy. 
I don't remember examining my appearance or even thinking about it. I definitely remember re-entering my body. Remember positioning my spirit body to lie down with the physical one and the two rejoining. Question. At what time during the experience were you at your highest level of consciousness and alertness? Answer. I was dazed from the blow to my head, and I realize now that I was in and out of consciousness during the time in the emergency room. But I remember that my alertness during the experience was high, in contrast to the way I remember being before and after the experience. Answer. Or question. <laughs> Did time seem to speed up or slow down? Answer. I have no idea how long the experience actually took. I estimate I was left in that side room for at least six hours. Wow. Question. Did you encounter or become aware of any deceased or alive beings? Answer. Yes. The only other being I encountered was the man who was working on my body doing some kind of medical procedure and who gave me the stern warning to be more careful in the future. He was standing there next to me on the stretcher and seemed to be doing something with instruments that looked like they were made of bronze or similar yellowish metal and in the shape of crochet hooks. He seemed put out that I was flying about in a childish manner. He warned me to be more careful and told me to go back into my body and to ask for a blanket and water. Question. What emotions did you feel during the experience? Answer, I felt curiosity about what was going on with my body down below me and happiness or delight and the ability to move around effortlessly through what seemed like mental energy. Also, not exactly fear, but a great deal of respect for the individual who was working on me and for things he said to me. Question, did you come to a border or point of no return? Answer, I was told very sternly to get back into my body, and I aligned myself with the position of the body, and almost immediately I was back in it and seeing things with my eyes, or with one eye, since the other eye was swollen closed. Question, what was your religion prior to your experience? Answer, liberal. Question, what is your religion now? Answer, conservative slash fundamentalist. Question, did you have a change in your values and beliefs because of your experience? Answer, yes, I'm even surer of the afterlife now, but perplexed as to its very nature. I'm convinced that it is much more complicated than we can imagine. It did make religious denominational differences seem irrelevant. Question, do you have any psychic, non-ordinary, or other special gifts after your experience that you did not have before the experience? Answer, no. I was told very sternly to get back into the body, and I aligned myself with the position of the body, and almost immediately I was back in it and seeing things with my eyes. Question, are there one or several parts of your experience that are especially meaningful or significant to you? Answer, getting hurt in the first place was the worst thing. The best part was feeling that there are mysteries that no living person can explain. Question. Have you ever shared this experience with others? Answer. Yes. Some understood, understand what I am talking about and have met others who have had the same type of experiences. Some people believe me, while others think I am cra that I am crazy. A lot of people explain it by saying things like hallucinations are to be expected after a head injury, and so on. And it looks as if there are a, some more questions that were answered years later. So let's see if there's any differences here. I think there are question. Did you encounter or become aware of any deceased or alive beings? Answer. Yes. A man dressed in a robe and cap operated on me with brass colored instruments and warned me not to take unnecessary physical chances in the future. Question. What emotions did you feel during the experience? Answer. Amazement, delight, wonder. Question, have your religious practices changed since your experience? Answer, uncertain. They have changed a little, 
but it came afterward and not as a direct result of my experience. Question. Question. Have your relationships changed specifically because of your experience? Answer. Yes, I've tried to be a lot nicer and tolerant. I am calmer and braver. Nice. Question. Do you have any psychic, non-ordinary, or other special gifts after your experience that you did not have before the experience? Answer, yes. For a long time afterwards, I could see people's auras and seemed able to predict small events accurately. Question, are there one or several parts of your experience that are especially meaningful or significant to you? Answer, I have certainly been a lot more careful about not getting hurt as I was advised to do. Question, have you ever shared this experience with others? Answer, yes. About one week, after about one week, I shared what happened. Those I told seemed to accept it. In some cases, they didn't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> Question, did you have any knowledge of near-death experiences prior to your experience? Answer, uncertain. I'm sure I had heard about NDE experiences from books and articles. My experience was different from those I had read about so at first, I didn't recognize the connection between what I had read and what happened. Later, I read a couple books about NDEs. Question, what did you believe about the reality of your experience shortly after it happened? Answer, experience was definitely real. It was fresh in my mind, and I, and as I recovered from the injuries, I became even more certain about what had happened. Question, what do you believe about the reality of your experience now? Experience was definitely real. Later, x-rays showed no displacement of bone, even though I had sustained a severe blow to the head. A great deal of CSF had leaked out through my sinuses and throat. I think the messenger had actually reset the bones as I watched from outside my body. Question. Are there any other questions that we could ask to help you communicate your experience? Answer. I have heard some people describe sort of an electrical charge in their bodies afterwards. There is some anecdotal evidence that they are no longer able to wear a watch without it malfunctioning. I wonder if there is anything to these reports and what might be the underlying scientific cause, if any. Well, for a while afterward, I had the idea that I also had some kind of charge, although it went away after about six months. End questions. End quote. A great story. And an operating messenger. I love it. I like that. Have a great day. Thank you for listening.